Welcome to The Cantankerous Catholic with Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy. Listen to Joe tackle the really tough moral issues, current events, and politics from a Catholic perspective. Now here's Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy. Hello there, Six Packers, and welcome back to The Cantankerous Catholic, episode 37. I'm getting real tired of the way the left keeps trying to disarm the American people. It goes on and on and on ad nauseum. Every time there's a mass shooting, the left wants to start talking about disarming Americans for our own safety. But it really doesn't have a thing in the world to do with keeping us safe or keeping more people from getting killed. We'll examine just what's going on here when we return. What do Billy D. Williams, the celebrated American artist Norman Rockwell, and famed comedian Jimmy Durante have to do with one man's journey from conservative Judaism to the cross? Everything. Marty Barrick has lived one of the most fascinating conversion journeys ever told. In Calvary Road, Marty's biography, you can read about Marty's military service with Billy D. Williams, how Norman Rockwell helped him pass a college course, how in his deep abiding love for his late wife, Marty helped Irene travel the road of sanctity, how the times are quickly reaching critical mass for fulfilling prophecy concerning the Jews, and much, much more. Get your copy of Calvary Road by Marty Barrick today in print or ebook on Amazon, Apple Books, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Just to make it clear, I'm not what the left considers an NRA gun nut. I don't even own a gun, and I haven't for nearly 35 years. So my rant today has nothing to do with me and my own guns. It has to do with knowing the difference between right and wrong. It has to do with personal responsibility. It has to do with understanding natural law. It has to do with liberty. Indeed, above all else, it has to do with liberty. Every single Democratic presidential candidate has made it perfectly clear that what they want to do is confiscate the guns of American citizens. They say they want to keep us safe, but this doesn't have anything to do with their concern for our safety. They don't give a damn about our safety. This is all about control and establishing their Marxist agenda. The left wants to take over the federal government and expand it to about three times the size it is now. They want to confiscate our money, tell us what to think, what to eat, what to say, and what to be. But they know they can't do that until they take our guns. In the last week, I've heard three Democratic presidential candidates tell their listeners that nobody needs an AR-15 to hunt deer. I'll grant them that. That's very true. I've never used an AR-15 to hunt deer, and I've never felt the need. But that doesn't mean we don't need our AR-15s. They make it apparent by the stupid statements they make that we need our AR-15s to defend ourselves against them. First, a fact about these mass shootings we've seen of late. To the best of my knowledge, every one of these evil acts has been committed by leftist supporters of Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders. None of us blame them for the evil things these shooters have done, but the leftist presidential candidates don't hesitate for a moment blaming ordinary American citizens for what these shooters do. Every time one of these mass shootings takes place, you never hear any reasoned, thought-out discourse from the left about how to stop the problem. What you do hear are all sorts of emotional platitudes and subjective arguments as to why the American people shouldn't even have guns. It's been my experience that whenever people make purely subjective arguments for the things they advocate, it's because they have nothing objective to offer that will stand up to the scrutiny of reality. The Constitution was written in 1787, but it wasn't ratified by the states until 1789. Do you know why? Because the states wanted the Bill of Rights added, the first ten amendments. Have you ever read those amendments? Every single one of them deal with our God-given liberties. 
the natural rights of people granted by nature itself. And here's the thing most Americans don't realize today, thanks to the state of education in this country. The Bill of Rights doesn't grant these liberties to us. No government can grant a right we have by nature. The Bill of Rights was established in order to oblige the federal government to defend and protect those rights. Liberty doesn't come from government, it comes from nature and the creator of that nature. I've heard liberals say that the Second Amendment is outdated. They say it was established to guarantee that people could hunt food in what was a largely rural country at that time. Apart from the blatant ignorance about the Constitution this shows the liberals have, the Second Amendment has absolutely nothing to do with hunting. Other liberals say we don't need the Second Amendment to protect ourselves and our homes from criminals any longer because we have modern police departments that can be dispatched immediately. Tell that to the families of the murdered victims of the shooting at Parkland, Florida. Liberals like New York Mayor Comrade de Blasio honestly think the police can handle any situation, so we don't need guns. But you know what? The Second Amendment also doesn't have a damn thing to do with self-defense. The ability to hunt, enjoy sport shooting, and self-defense are all wonderful side benefits of the Second Amendment, but those benefits have absolutely nothing to do with the reason it exists. The whole reason the Second Amendment makes the government responsible for protecting our natural right to keep and bear arms is so we're always able to defend ourselves against the tyranny of government, so we can stop the tyrannical overreach of government from enslaving us. Don't believe it? Listen to what a couple of our founding fathers had to say. Jefferson said, a true patriot will defend his country from its government. He also said, free men do not ask permission to bear arms. I love that one. I'm going to say it again. Jefferson said, free men do not ask permission to bear arms. Finally, Jefferson said, when tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. James Madison said, disarm the people. That is the best and most effective way to enslave them. Does this sound like the Founding Fathers were concerned with our ability to hunt game for food? They weren't even concerned with self-defense because having guns to defend ourselves from the government makes defense a given. Notice that the left is crying out what a great crisis we have with access to guns in our country. Do you know what Madison said about that? He said crisis is the rallying cry of the tyrant. That really ought to tell us something about brain-dead liberals. They don't give a damn about safety. They don't give a damn about loss of life. If they did, they wouldn't support abortion and euthanasia. What they care about is power. They want to control us, and they know that can never happen as long as we have guns. People are eating out of dumpsters in Venezuela. They're starving to death down there. The people are rebelling against their socialist country, They're fighting with rocks and sticks and bottles. Do you know why? Because the government disarmed the people. I've heard Venezuelan after Venezuelan say in interviews that they wish they'd never allowed the government to disarm them. Venezuela used to be one of the richest countries in the world, but now it's the poorest in South America. The government is socialist. That's the way of socialism. First they disarm you, then they enslave you, and only the select prosper. Every single Democratic candidate is calling on America to become socialist. Every one of those same candidates is calling for the confiscation of guns in America. Doesn't that sound like the beginning of trying to turn America into Venezuela to you? Hong Kong was under British rule from 1842 to 1997, when Britain gave Hong Kong back to mainland communist China. As the Chinese government became increasingly tyrannical and iron-fisted, the people became less tolerant of their communist overlords. For several months, the people of Hong Kong have been protesting against the Chinese government, often having violent confrontations with the Chinese military and police. Have they been using guns? Of course not. 
They've been using sticks and rocks. They were disarmed long ago. But do you know what I saw a week or so ago? I saw protesters carrying signs that said, We need a Second Amendment. Why would protesters carry signs saying they need to be armed like Americans are? Because it's been made vividly clear to them that being armed is the only defense against tyranny. By the way, the Hong Kong protesters have been using the Star Spangled Banner as the official song of their movement. The Second Amendment clearly says that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. In law, the word shall is the strongest imperative word that can be used. In other words, when shall is used, absolutely nothing can contradict that. Liberals have made great strides in gun control over the last 50 years or so. Every single gun control on the books is completely unconstitutional. The first gun control in America was in 1928 during Prohibition. That's when possession of fully automatic weapons was outlawed. The well-meaning intent was to keep the Tommy gun out of the hands of gangster bootleggers. How'd that work out? Not too good. The only people today who have fully automatic weapons are the military, police, and, wait for it, gangsters. So the only people deprived of anything were law-abiding American citizens. Funny thing about criminals, they don't care about the law. Consider this. Because of the Second Amendment saying the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, it's actually unconstitutional to prohibit gun ownership by convicted felons. When this notion was first proposed to me, it gave me pause. I didn't agree with it, but there was something about it that kept me from rejecting it completely out of hand. Did you know that through the middle of the 20th century, many agrarian states actually gave a man a gun upon his release from prison? A gun was considered a key element to his survival. Learning this made me apply a little logic to the notion that it's actually unconstitutional to prohibit gun ownership by convicted felons. Think about it. We've already established that criminals don't care about the law. Prohibiting convicted felons from owning a gun is something criminals will just ignore. They do, all the time. But what do you do about the convicted felon who's reformed himself and decided to live like the rest of us law-abiding Americans? Because he's reformed, he won't own a gun, because it's illegal. Because he's now a law-abiding citizen, forbidding him the right to keep and bear arms places him at a disadvantage to other citizens. He can't defend his property, his family, or himself, much less be the true patriot to defend his country from its government, as Jefferson said. The problem isn't guns. The problem is twofold. Our willingness to sacrifice our liberties for a false security and the lack of moral character in this country. Regarding the first, Reagan warned us that the loss of our freedom is always just one generation away. That means we need to fight and fight now, because liberals are trying to take our liberties away from us. We can't afford to wait until some arbitrary line is crossed to say that's when it'll be enough to fight. We can't think that it won't happen in America, because the Democratic campaigns are showing us that it can. I'm not talking about using physical force or violence to fight. What I'm referring to is using all the political activism we can now so we don't have to use force later. We all have to get involved. There's also the moral character issue. There's no moral character in America anymore. Morality in America has become what each individual deems morality to be. There is no standard to follow anymore, no objective set of guidelines. As Catholics, we know that's not true. There are objective norms. They're called the Ten Commandments, and we know how they're applied because the Church Christ established with authority tells us so. We're all guilty of allowing things to get the way they have in America because we stood by and did nothing when we knew we should have been doing something. It's easy to say to yourself, I'm just one person. Anything I do can amount to a hill of beans. Why put myself out there when I already know I won't be doing any good? 
Saying such things to yourself demonstrates the epitome of lukewarmness and cowardice. Yes, cowardice. God never asks us to succeed at anything. Success is always 100% up to him. He only asks us to do what we ought. What he demands now is what he's always demanded, that we share the faith which includes trying to help people find their moral compass. I've been sharing the faith with people for over 30 years. The Holy Spirit has used me to make hundreds of converts, and 84 of them are my adult godchildren. When the Holy Spirit works through us in a big way, He usually uses the talents given to us before we were even born. When we develop those talents for Him, we're often impelled to pass on to others what we've done and how we've done it for the greater glory of God. That's why I wrote the Lay Evangelist Handbook. You might say the Lay Evangelist Handbook was 30 years in the making, because in this book I share with you all the best that I've learned about how to share the faith with laps and non-Catholics, so you can bring your friends and family to the fullness of divinely revealed truth. The very first chapter gives you a thorough explanation of the things you need to do to maximize your effectiveness so you won't end up with egg on your face when trying to engage people. I explain the differences between the various types of lay evangelists and others you can learn from. I even talk about some statistics that should help give you a real sense of urgency for sharing the faith. Then I get to the step-by-step process for sharing the faith. I give a full presentation of the exact text I've used and refined for 30 years. I tell you what to do, what to say, and how to do and say it, while leaving room for you to work in your own personality and make these techniques your own. There's no other book like this on the market. So get your print or ebook copy of the Lay Evangelist Handbook today. It's available in print on cantankerouscatholic.com or in print and ebook on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy, wants to make sure you're informed about all the Catholic news you need to know. Here's Joe Sixpack's top five Catholic news picks for this episode. Catholic news pick number five. Hats off to LifeSite News. The co-creator of VeggieTales says that the Christian filmmakers will need to start addressing LGBT issues in their work, but from the biblical perspective, since children are already being exposed to these narratives in secular programming. Phil Vischer said he won't compromise if pressed. You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. Catholic News Pick Number 4 Hats off to LifeSite News. During her daily live show, Mother Miriam Moss, whom I've known for years, challenged parents to uphold their duty as primary educators of their children. She alerted parents to the fact that today's schools are filled with evil and that it is the first and foremost duty of parents to protect their kids. You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. Catholic Catholic News News Pick number number three. Hats off to Western Journal. This is what passes for brain power in the Democratic Party these days. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, whom I call the bartender and is everybody's favorite Democrat socialist from the Big Apple, decided to show off her intellectual acumen again with an Instagram post that oh so cleverly reveals that large parts of the United States has land that is (gasps) underdeveloped. So naturally, that's an argument for upending the Constitution and getting rid of the Electoral College. You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. Catholic Catholic News News Pick pick number two. two. Hats off to Western Journal. Facebook reportedly pulled an ad from President Donald Trump's re-election campaign that targeted women because it was in violation of its ads policies. The reason is absolutely insane, but there's no bias in social media, right? You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. Catholic Catholic News Pick pick Number One Hats off to LifeSite News. A late-term abortionist is offering women an opportunity to, get this, hold their babies 
after delivery, in other words, after he's murdered them, or take a picture home as a remembrance after ending their unborn child's life. This is as sick and depraved as it gets. You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. I believe a really great way to teach the faith is through stories, parables, and anecdotes. So here's today's story. The curé of ours, St. John Vianney, once had a Protestant man visit him. Thinking the man was a Catholic, the priest began talking about Jesus and the saints. When the visitor was about to leave, the holy priest put a medal into the man's hand. The visitor said, Father, you've given a medal to a heretic. At least I'm a heretic to your way of thinking. Although we're not of the same religion, I hope we will one day be together in heaven. The good priest took the man's hand in his, looked at him searchingly, and said, Unfortunately, my friend, we can't be together in heaven unless we've begun to live so in this world. Death changes nothing. As the tree falls, so shall it lie. But father, the man argued, I put my trust in Jesus Christ, who said, He that believes in me shall have eternal life. Ah, the priest added, Jesus Christ said many more things than that. He also said, If he refuses to listen to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and tax collector. And another time Jesus said, So there shall be one flock, one shepherd. He really gave us one fold and one shepherd. After a brief pause, the curé concluded, My dear friend, there aren't two ways of serving Jesus Christ. There's only one way, and that's to serve him as he wants to be served. This idea started the man to thinking and praying until he finally thought and prayed himself right into the Catholic Church. Jesus Christ established the church to lead all men to eternal salvation. Through the church, he shows us the way to serve him as he himself wants to be served. St. John pointed out that the Catholic Church is one fold that leads to salvation, and Jesus is the one shepherd. Hey, Six Packers, that's all for this episode. I've enjoyed having you with me. Don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. The links are in my show notes. Also, remember to visit joesixpackanswers.com to sign up for my free email course. Each short lesson arrives in your inbox every three days. We also have the Cantankerous Catholic Social Media Group you can join to discuss anything about Catholicism, our country, or anything else on your mind. I visit the page every day. The link's also in my show notes. There are lots of other neat things of interest in my show notes, too. You can find them at cantankerouscatholic.com. And remember to live by the Joe Sixpack battle cry. Comfort and conviction don't live on the same block. This has been the Cantankerous Catholic with Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy. Thanks for subscribing, and be sure to visit cantankerouscatholic.com to get your free copy of Joe's popular book, The Best of What We Believe, Why We Believe It.